In the spring of 2020, classes were online and the ski resorts were closed. This pushed us permanently into the backcountry and was my first real exposure to the amazing skiing you can access under your own power. And while powder is pretty great, the biggest advantage to backcountry skiing is the terrain. A pretty awesome Utah trip provided lines and snow I couldn't have imagined before. And in our own backyard, Peak One provided steeps not found in bounds. But then the snow started melting. We looked to higher altitude, skiing first Quandary and then Elbert. It's like some nice toilet paper that I'm gonna use to go take a dump right now. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> maybe. I've got, I think I have wet wipes. I might have to. It took us three tries to ski Albert. To see exactly the route that we went up, the Colorado Trail meets up right to the top of it. I can even show you a picture. There's a picture of it right here. All right, it's not gonna work. We had a comically disastrous descent of the Plata, where the North Calor did not go. But good skiing at the bottom. And that brings us to the cross. The cross Calor was first skied in 1977. Access is through the Half Moon Trailhead, from which you climb and descend Half Moon Pass. Then you can choose whether to navigate the valley to the Bull of Tears and then boot the Calor or take the north ridge to the summit. However, the access road is closed until June 21st. This adds an additional eight miles each direction. I am not sure if it was Logan or Michael who first proposed the idea, but eager to ski the cross, we loaded up our camping and ski gear onto the bikes and set off. Just transitioned from bikes to skis. Yep. Logan is uh, taking a dump. Hey, Logan, how's the <laughs> going? <laughs> that was a little X rated. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we're going to carry two backpacks and our skis for two miles where the trail starts. So we have made camp about five miles from the summit. We have dug out a little trench to get to the campfire, which Logan is currently working on. Yeah, 3.30 in the morning. My bladder almost erupted <laughs> half an hour ago. All right, we've made it to the top of Half Moon Pass. The sun is just coming up over the ridge. See it peeking down on the mountaintops. So a uh, little status update, we got over Half Moon Pass and then traversed along the ridge for a little bit and then once we saw Holy Cross, uh, two of our members decided that it was too far and uh, the other member of the group convinced the other two to do a nearby peak instead and that is the peak that I am on top of or almost to a meta semi-summit of a peak called Notch Peak and then that's Holy Cross in the background there you can see that uh, Holy Cross you are being saved for next time we did it no more oh, summit it was this view from Notch Mountain that would provide the motivation for my next four attempts I took a quick picture turned around and headed back to camp that would wrap up my ski season, but I couldn't wait until the next spring to return to the cross. In early September, online school was getting to my head, so with no planning, I drove up, got a couple hours of sleep in my car, and trail around the North Ridge. My reward was a pretty incredible sunrise summit. 
and I was still back in time for my laser physics lab. It was also my first time ever using Strava. On May 24th, 2021, Logan and I once again biked up the road, <laughs> this <there>. time <laughs> bringing no Joey pushing. along. Just, just repetitive. <laughs> just... That's all it was. Four hours. <laughs> oh, am I? Oh, my leg just cramped. We're down bad. This is not ideal. We're down bad. <laughs> we got a long ways to go. The plan was to camp at the top of the pass and then do the final push in one day. But the snow is not continuous and we got lost for several hours on the approach to the Kalor. When we got to the base, it was already too late. Rock and snow were starting to fall off the face and we decided to turn around, which was a bummer. I now knew what it would take to climb the cross and I wanted to do it in one day. All right, here we are at the trailhead. Oh boy. 11.30, we're gonna do Holy Cross. There's Michael. Very nice. Halfway up. We're an hour and 15 minutes in. Clean breaks. Started to see a little bit more snow. The moon's out. So we can pretty much see without the headlamp. You can't see without on the phone, but. These were the best conditions that I've ever tried to ski the cross in. And it was the most brutal turnaround because my shifts iced up and I could not switch them into hike mode. I could not keep going. Only a couple miles past the trailhead, even though we were way ahead of schedule. The winter of 2023 saw long tours in Canada yep. and big lines in Idaho. In the spring, I skied off Mount Whitney and booted up the Belford. I was confident I could grind out the cross. Ooga booga, ooga booga. <laughs> What's up, ooga booga? <laughs> what the hell is this? John Coltrane? What the hell is this, dude? This is the damn elevator music. Elev oh, we're about to man. take the elevator to heaven out here today. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this climb already sucks. Dude, the back's getting scold, sweating, it's raining a little bit. How's the single speed? It's fine. The single speed's great besides the back. It just, it'll make you arch your spine, make you arch your back. That's what, that's what you feel. That's all you feel. Just the back. The legs are fine. <laughs> this, this is, is not, mud. this is not good. <laughs> oh my this God. This is not good at all. Oh boy. <laughs> Definitely a little haunted. Two twenty. We're at the ridge, half moon pass. Uh huh. Just Dominic and I now. So it's 516, we're turning it around. Yeah. We can see the mountain now, but... It's not looking good. No. We're, we're basically worried that we're not gonna make our weather window. The idea is that we're not confident that there's snow all the way up to where we can see there's snow. And as you can see, there's not a lot of snow up here. So we're it only going down. Doesn't give me super a lot of confidence that there's snow down there.
<laughs> I'm not gonna be able to walk. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> that was one of the worst experiences of my life. Oh, that is like top five, top three maybe. <laughs> Although I had a blast, I had a blast. I'm glad. Oh, yeah. Right in the river. Straight in the river. <laughs> Oh, this is video? <laughs> yeah. God damn it, dude. I thought these were photos. Oh. Dude, the least holy fucking mountain in the state, maybe even. Attempt number five. <laughs> it is 1 a.m. We are where we left the bikes last time. And it's pretty dry. Onward and upward. 2.02 a.m. We just finished the bike. Starting our transition. It took us two, and a, two hours and 20 minutes to do the whole bike. So not, not too shabby. It's 3.47. And just like 26 hours ago, I was waking up in LA, flew out in the morning, and now we're uh, worked, yeah, also worked, took a nap uh, today, went to the uh, Oriental Back Rub in the Colorado Mills. Can't recommend enough, they really, they just treat you phenomenal. Oh, first nice. of the wild flower. 4.30, we're over the ridge, we can see the mountain. Yeah, how are you how are you feeling, Joey? Absolutely feral. I'm like a pit bull with no leash right now. <laughs> so we just did uh, some of the most heinous post holing I have ever seen. Six forty, doing our transition. You can see the peak. We're hoping we don't have too much more vert until the chlor. Finally skinning. It is seven forty. Just now, starting to have fun. I took a wrong turn. We um had to do the most heinous down climb imaginable. Maybe not imaginable, but felt bad. Feels bad. 755. We are almost to the base of the Calore. Just past eight. Eight thirty. About to start booting. Eight forty-eight. Nine o'clock on the dot. Getting the calore. I'm gonna push ahead because I don't think Joey's gonna make it. At the summit, it is 9.45, 45 minutes up the main calore. Feels pretty good. See the maroon bells out there.
Albert. Massive. Grays and Tories. And then, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the Gore Range. Maybe it's behind it. Just before 10 o'clock, I had to do a quick transition. I haven't eaten or drinking any water. Heading back down. Let some slough clear out. Legs are torched. Hot, heavy skiing. That's interesting. Woo! Getting tired. Oh.
did it. Plow through. It's noon. We've made our transition. It's feral. It's very feral. Things are feral. Gus is forgetting stuff. Oh, I almost just lost my new carabiner. It is 12.50. We are at mile 19. Feral. Feral. Bottom of uh, the, the pass, I can't remember what it's called. It doesn't matter. Something about a moon. Well, the trail goes into the snow. There's really only one real option that we have. That is the post hole. About 3.30. Not really sure where Joey is, but he should be here soon. And now I just got eight miles back to the car. Got some campers showing up to give her a shot tomorrow. Good luck to them. It is now rain snowing on us. Just before four o'clock. What do you have to, to share with the world? No. <laughs> okay, I, speak. I think I'm starting to hallucinate. I was seeing things in the trees. I have never misjudged the length <laughs> of like a trail that bad in my entire life. I thought I was going I thought I missed the I thought I missed the parking lot and was just walking down the mountain. I like 20 minutes ago I was like does this thing go forever? <laughs> and it was like every corner you'd see like a stick, you'd be like, oh, that's the parking lot. And then it just, it kept happening. And then there's some absolutely sick son of a bitch skinning up right now. Was it the lady? Yeah, from Colorado. Yeah. I was like, unbelievable. Oh, buffaloes. Final stretch. Feral. <laughs> Feral. That was. Oh. I need some time to process. We were out there a long time. So long. Dude, my mind went to some weird places. Yeah. Was... <laughs> oh. I'm ready to sleep. Yeah. I need to eat and sleep. 